this I say, brethren, the time is short, it remaineth, that both they that have wives be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoiced not, and they that buy as though they possessed not, and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away. A multiple shooting has uh, taken place at the AME Church, the Emmanuel AME uh, Church. One of my greatest concerns for the church in America, let alone America, is that we have no idea. We have no idea what is coming. We just are going about business as usual. I want to thank Unfazed, unmoved, untouched. Even by the number of Christian brothers and sisters who are being murdered, martyred for their faith in Jesus Christ in the Middle East. These are my countrymen. These are my fellow Arab brothers and sisters in Egypt and Libya. And the church is just asleep. We're so concerned about our lives in this world. We've got our roots down too deep in this world. And I think it breaks the heart of God. And I don't mean this to in any way be condemning. Convicting, yes. Condemning, no. If you've never called upon the name of the Lord, confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart, I implore you to do so. Now is the time. Now is the day. Today is the day. And conversely, and I know that I speak to more, those of us who do know the Lord and are walking with the Lord, then I would implore you to be like the men of Issachar, whom were told, understood the times they were living in, and they knew what to do about it. They understood the times, and they knew what to do. You know, when you go into the doctor, and the doctor says, you've got six months, you better get your affairs in order. I would say, what if we don't have six months? Are your affairs in order? Is there any unfinished business you have that you need to deal with? I hope that you'll allow the Lord to really do that deep searching in your heart and mine as well. I, with you have really found myself as a way just putting myself as a living sacrifice on the altar just saying okay God everything anything whatever it is I'm yours and it is a, a death to self it is a picking up of one's cross and following him and maybe that day for you is today that you just need to come and posture yourself before the Lord humbly in complete surrender and when you do you can be assured that the Lord will baptize you anew and fill you afresh with the Holy Spirit and that's where the power comes in. <laughs> Honestly, I don't know how Christians in this late hour in which we're living 
are going to be able to survive in the days ahead without the Holy Spirit, the power of the Holy Spirit. If you've never been baptized in the Holy Spirit, I would encourage you today to ask the Lord to baptize you in the Holy Spirit. Lord, will you now, by way of the Holy Spirit, meet us here in this place and in this time. My sense is, is that there's something that you desire to do in our midst today. And Lord, we want to get out of your way so that you can have your way with us. Do with us as you please, Lord. We are yours. Thank you, in Jesus' name. They that use this world as not abusing it, but the fashion of this world passeth away. Here's what the Holy Spirit said. He said, I have many ministers, and they are speaking on my behalf. But he said, what's missing is the urgency of this. These mega churches are really cognizant not to offend people. And they're really careful when they get up preach to people that everybody leaves out there feeling really good. Preachers refuse to preach on the coming of Jesus Christ. Where's the urgency? I have never seen America in the place where we are right now. If you think that all the persecution is going to remain in Iraq against the Christians, you better think again. It's already coming into this country right now. We've got to preach with an urgency in our voice that we need to be right with God if anything should happen to us. There's things right now in motion that may change our nation almost overnight. And for me to stand here and act like everything's all right, I can't do that. The politicians in Washington may can do that and lead you to believe that everything's gonna be okay. But in the house of God, there's got to arise a siren that says, Blast, 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 attention, attention, attention. Things are changing and they're changing quickly. We've got to have preachers in the pulpit that will say, watch out, warning, warning, red light, warning. People know something's going on in the Middle East. They know something's going on in Iraq, in Iran, in Damascus. They know about Iran. And people that's not even scripturally literate are trying to answer these things and they're missing in a million miles. And God's saying to the preachers, get up and tell them. It's time to talk about what God's doing. People are seeking the Lord. People are seeking Christ. And if they don't find him in the church, where are they going to find him? I have a question. Where is the urgency? But this I say, brethren, the time is short. It remaineth that both they that have wives be as though they had none, and they that weep as though they wept not, and they that rejoice as though they rejoiced not, and they that buy as though they possessed not, and they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away.
If you've never called upon the name of the Lord, confessing with your mouth and believing in your heart, I implore you to do so. Now is the time. Now is the day. Today is the day. And they that use this world as not abusing it, for the fashion of this world passeth away.